then Jack left, of course, too. So, and Bob Jack. Taylor. But, well, there was no one left. No one left who could stand up anyway and be counted. Yeah, yeah. I, I just... I just hated to see old staff when I came back to Regina after I retired. They would, I would meet somebody and they would just weep, weep, weep on my shoulder and uh, I thought so I avoided them mm -hmm. because I couldn't, I couldn't take it either. Um, and it wouldn't have done any good if I'd stayed. It would, the same thing would have happened. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't have, I've never had this feeling of guilt you know, because it would have happened anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I couldn't have stopped it. No. Um, I want to ask you another question about that, but I'm going to check with Al here. You've changed the tape there. Does it, does it need another white balance? You can, do you need another white balance on the camera or anything? No. You it's on. No. Okay. Um, how are we doing here? You know, it's, we've been going a long time. Are you getting tired? Or no, what? I'm fine. Um, do I look tired? No. Again, no. I'm just checking to find out. Probably another 15 minutes, I think, is, is about the extent of the questions that I have, although I'd love to hit, have you continue to talk as you like. Um, okay. Um, you may not have it in, uh, you may not have it in right. Um, so you, you left the uh, provincial department in, in what year was it? 1965. And you had no job to go to, and no. you weren't yet of retirement age. No. What did you do? Well, Bob Talbot came into my office and he said, you know, Millie, I've been thinking. I think because you were a teacher and a social worker that you should teach social work. So I said, oh, do you? And he said, yes. So I, I wrote to Helen and I told her. And she phoned me and said, okay, report on the 1st of September. This was Helen Mann of the University of Manitoba. <laughs> it was that simple. <laughs> <laughs> any, uh, any academics who hear this will be very envious of you. <laughs> Why? Of your ability to get a position that oh. easily. <laughs> oh, but it was different in those days. Oh, indeed. Then. Indeed it was. Uh, so at the University of Manitoba, you had mentioned earlier you were teaching Doing field placement? I did field placements. Mm -hmm. And all the time I was there, this is interesting, all the time I was there, I worked with the Society of Crippled Children and Adults. Uh, you worked as a paid employee too? No, no, oh. no. I, I had my unit in that agency for eight years. Oh, yes, with Archie Carmichael then. That's right, with Archie, mm -hmm. whom I had known before because of the, of the, um, oh, the conferences that they used to have, uh, what did they call them? Canadian, Canadian Conference on Social Welfare or something no, like that? No, no. This had to do with children. It was got up by Keith. I can't remember. But it was a conference on children. Mm -hmm. And Archie was there. Mm -hmm. How was the uh, teaching experience at University of Manitoba different from the work you've been doing uh, in Saskatchewan? You mean, I had taught in Saskatchewan. No, oh, I meant from your uh, term as Director of Child Welfare. You moved from there to the teaching at uh, University of Manitoba. Oh, well, it's a, it's a very different thing. Uh, you haven't any responsibility for cases other than the ones that your students are carrying. You don't have to make administrative decisions. Um, you know, they're, they're well, it's just as different as night from day, in my opinion. Um, and I tried to point this out to the students, that it was very, very different working in a protected setting like that agency. Uh, the agency itself, because Archie Carmichael was a, you know, a pretty staunch social worker, when they built that new building, they built into it a place for students, which is unusual, eh? Mm -hmm. There was room for eight students in the, no, about ten, really. And then I had a little office at the end. Your own place. My own place. And I was the envy of every social worker in 
a, a teacher of social work because I had this little place and right next to it was the library. So I was really in clover. Um, and this is what the students, I think, felt was that, uh, you know, it was a kind of a different experience for them from some of the other uh, teachers, you know, field work professors, because I couldn't talk to them without going into administration or, you know, these mm -hmm. other things which, which they, uh, I'm sure, thought about often after they graduated. Mm -hmm. I, I enjoyed it. I, I just loved the teaching. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether I would have enjoyed classroom teaching as much. I had to teach one term. I didn't have to, but they asked me if I would. Uh, I don't know whether you ever knew Maisie Rogers. I certainly know the name. Well, Maisie had cancer and she um, was going to teach this class on social welfare, one, and she couldn't. Um, the doctor wouldn't let her. So they, this was right at the beginning of the term, and, and they looked around and they wondered where on earth they were going to get somebody to teach social welfare, and they figured out I knew more about it than anybody on staff. And I probably did, from a practical point of view. So I gave these lectures in social welfare, and I, I <laughs> You know, students have a way now they can punish you, so they just walk out or they don't come or they, you know, and you lecture to empty seats. I thought if that ever happened to me, I'd die. I didn't die. It did happen to you? No, it didn't happen. Oh. <laughs> so I didn't die. Oh, good. But I, I just think that's enough. When I went to university, you know, if you took two cuts, you wouldn't graduate. You had to sit there and take it whether they were any good or not. <laughs> okay. Oh dear. But uh, this is the kind of the difference. But uh, but that's the only time I actually did um, lecturing. Mm -hmm. Lecturing. Are there other things about your experience at the University of Manitoba that stand out in your mind? No, except that I, I do think that, looking back, I, I always think that I was really specially, uh, that my experience was maybe a little different from some of the others because I had the head of an agency who was so behind us that it, it made a tremendous difference. For instance, one time a group of my students did a little survey they were doing research, and uh, it was into people who were totally disabled. They found out some very interesting things. One about a boy that had no, he couldn't move his arms, he couldn't move anything but his head. And he became very wealthy lying in bed because he played the stock market. <laughs> Fascinating things that they came up with. Well, when they finished this and got it all put together, Archie asked them to present it to the board. Now, this is something that would never happen to the ordinary student, would it? Well, that's what I mean. I, I think I was lucky mm -hmm. yeah, indeed. Uh, indeed. in, in uh, working with Archie. Yeah. 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 He, was, he was great. Um, you retired in, what, 1974, was it? I have to look it up. I never can remember. Yes, I think so. Uh, Harvey has it down here anyway. Nineteen seventy three. Nineteen seventy three. Harvey Stolick says. What have you been doing since then? Well, the first little while I came back, uh, I, I was very busy. In, in case you haven't ever written a book, it, it's, it's really a big job. 
I hadn't realized how big a job it was. And unfortunately, something very bad had happened in the department. I had a, a group of files that were, we called them area topics. Oh, for instance, uh, the Children's Aid of Moose Jaw, Regina, um, all, all the material about the kids who came over here during the war, um, and everything was in this cabinet. And uh, I saw that as my source material, actually. When I came back and went into the department, they couldn't find it, and somebody had thrown it out, who didn't know any better. So that I had to get, fortunately, what I did when I quit work, when I resigned, I didn't have anything to do for about three months. And I sat down and wrote everything I could remember about child welfare. And it was lucky I did, because that was my source material. Mm -hmm. And then I had to work out at archives with the annual reports and all that kind of stuff that they had out there. And I got permission from Tommy Douglas and from the wife of Jack Sturdy and, of course, Sandy Nicholson, who is uh, still alive, <laughs> you know, to give it. Their files are all in archives up in Saskatoon, and they can't be opened for 30 years after they retire. Uh, so I had permission to use their files. So. so it made it much more difficult, that's all. Mm -hmm. uh, but was I ever glad I wrote it all down? Because mm -hmm. in seven years you forget, you know. Sure, sure. So you've written and published this book, and I must say that I too have found an invaluable resource for my Saskatchewan work and my child welfare investigations. Well, really why I wrote it was that when I talked to my students, there wasn't anything on child welfare you could refer them to that was Canadian, mm -hmm. you know? So when I say I wrote it as a textbook, that's what I meant. I did. Mm -hmm. I, I wrote it so that the students would have something about child welfare. Mm -hmm. um, okay, maybe we could move now to some general questions and sort of <clears throat> concluding questions. Uh, um, are there other things you'd like to say about your retirement? No, except I feel that I have been very, very well treated in my retirement. You, you know, know, the university gave me a doctorate, and uh, um, they don't come along every day. No, indeed. No, indeed. And, uh, you know, the so, uh, the association has remembered I'm around, uh, you know, that kind of thing. The SASW, yeah. So I, I would think that uh, the other thing, though, I have done, if you're interested in what I've been, I've been doing in my retirement, they decided they. The background of this was that this university would be interested in gerontology and Saskatoon in geriatric, uh, the medical thing. And uh, Lloyd Barber asked the extension department to see if they could get a group of seniors together in the field of education. So the extension person did call the some of us together, and uh, it was sort of funny what happened. She, this group were a very mixed group, and uh, she believed in group dynamics, that if you talked long enough you'd come to some conclusion. I am not a follower of group dynamics. And uh, <laughs> so I sat through two of these meetings where everybody was sharing their ignorance, and I finally said, well, you know, I think it'd be a good idea if two or three people got together and drew up some material. So, of course, she fastened on this and said, you. <laughs> and uh, the other person had been the registrar of the university and retired.
so Cliff and I got together and we wrote out a curriculum and how it would be set up. We took it to the meeting and it passed. Now, I wasn't the first president of this organization because I was too busy with this. Mm -hmm. They came together and I couldn't, I couldn't do this. And so they set this center up with the help of um, New Horizons. They had grants, a grant from New Horizons. And the Department of Social Welfare um, fixed up the room, like the chairs and the tables and so on that they needed. And the university gave them a room over in what is re called Regina College. It's a downtown campus. It was the old college, and it's close to downtown, everything. So they started out, Ruth started out with four classes for seniors. We have a full group of classes now, and we had over a thousand registrations this year. Amazing. Now, what happened, if you know anything about New Horizons, you know that at the end of two years, they won't give you any more money. So at the end of two years, they've, we found ourselves without any money, or we had brains enough, of course, to think of this ahead of time. But we were going to be without any money. So I, I was president of, the, uh, of this by that time, and I'm still the president. And I went to see the president of the university and told him our little tale of woe. And he looked at me and he said, I am not going to let it go down the drain. But don't tell anybody I said that. In due course, it did go through the Senate and the board and everything, and this group became a part, a permanent part of the university. Now, they say that the reason they don't want me to stop as president is that I can talk to Lloyd Barber. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure that's right, but... <laughs> But it was important that I could talk to him that day. I'll sure, remember. indeed it was. Actually, Lloyd comes every year to open the classes and uh, and always talks to the group and everything. Mm -hmm. it, I think we were lucky that the president of the university was from right near Regina, Regina Beach, and and has grandparents and so on. And, he realizes what the seniors are like. His grandmother, he told me, was painting when she was 97. <laughs> so he uh, he looks at seniors in a different way than some people might. Mm -hmm. you know? would. So that's really about all I'm doing. Mm -hmm. okay. um, a couple of uh, general questions then to uh, finish up with here. One is, um, as you look back over the years, are there accomplishments that stand out in your mind? Pardon? Accomplishments that stand out in your mind. Well, let me start with the most recent and, and go, then I'll go back. I think I got a tremendous satisfaction out of teaching students. And I get a tremendous satisfaction when I see that one of my students, who was a very difficult fellow at the time and didn't give a hoot about CASW or anything, was on the board of CASW. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I think those kind of things, I, I, I get a real kick out of the fact that two of my students have become doctors, you know, after all. And they still write to me and so on. And I, th I think that the fact that I was able to turn out with the help, of course, of the school, but I, I think field work is a terrifically important part of education, you know, of mm -hmm. the, because that's where you get your models and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think that some of them were very, very good social workers are very good social workers. Mm -hmm. 
And I, I think that gave me a great deal of satisfaction. Going back to uh, when I was working in, in child welfare, I, I think that they haven't been able to completely destroy what we did. You know, I think there are still standards in child care and uh, all of these things which go to make up a good child welfare program. I, I think they're still they're still there, maybe not carried out the way we'd like them to be, but, you know, those standards were set, and um, um, I think that uh, that they're there. I hope that with their privatization they don't go back to children's aid societies. You know, it scared me, but uh, knowing what I know about them. Because I never felt a board was important in the Children's Aid Society. I think the executive director is the fellow or the person who, who runs the roost. Mm -hmm. That might be different in a big agency like Toronto, I wouldn't know, but the ones I saw here, um, I always remember when the Saskatoon Children's Aid Society was Finally, I said to the uh, executive director, I would like to meet with your board. And I knew a couple of his boards, so, that, you know, it was, he, he called them. And when I told them that we paid 74% of the cost of running the agency and 95% of the cost of running their institution, of which they were so proud, they wouldn't believe me. Reg had never told them. They were in complete ignorance of, of how involved we were, mm -hmm. you know, financially. Mm -hmm. So when you get involved that much financially, you're going to ask the answer for answers, mm -hmm. aren't you? Mm -hmm. Accountability. Mm -hmm. That's right. So. Uh, Are there other accomplishments that come to mind? Oh dear. I don't know. I don't know what I've done, really. I think some of the staff that I work with have turned out to be very good people. You know? And have principles and, and that kind of thing. We had some good staff. Well, I was very lucky to work with the people I did. You know, there aren't many more Upars around town, are there? I've not met her yet. I'm sure you're right, though. Have you never met her? No, not yet. Oh, I thought you said you'd interviewed her. No, I will in Montreal in a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Well, you see, Marie, uh, I'll just say this ahead of time. Marie was an administrator deluxe. Mm -hmm. Oh, she really was good. She just, uh, and I say this in the book, she brought order out of chaos. Mm -hmm. You know, we were all running around doing all kinds of things, but it was Marie that, that uh, set the thing up mm -hmm. and uh, made some sense out of, out of what was going on. Mm -hmm. Um, and she, she of course, was a, a real professional and could set standards and all. You know, this is what you needed uh, at that time. Mm -hmm. So that um, I learned, you know, you, you do, but uh, I, uh, I must say I would not want to go through the last day I spent in the department again. No, it was hard. Hmm? Well, it was really funny what happened. Uh, the regional services were having a, a meeting of all the uh, senior administrators and so on, and they were having a session, a session. 
and they had, um, it was a seminar, and they had a fellow here from British Columbia whose name I can't recall, Art somebody. And he had been the person who had advised, Marie, uh, advised Ruby McKay to do what she did. And I had a great respect for Art, and he, you know, was leading this seminar. And he, the word had gone out that I was going to retire, or what had retired or something. Anyway, he said that he had lectured to these people before, and he said, you know, they all sat there just like automatons, and he said, they wouldn't say anything, they wouldn't talk, they wouldn't do anything. So he said, Millie, you have to do something, you have to say something to the staff. And I said, Art, I can't, I can't face them. And he said, you are going to do it. They need it. <laughs> he didn't care what I thought, you know, but he was a really good social worker in this film. And uh, so they were having a, a meeting afterwards and uh, Bob Talbot wasn't there. I don't know why Bob wasn't, but he wasn't. And at the end of their session they were discussing adoption um, and I'd been sitting at this meeting. Uh, Ken turned and said, Millie has something to say and I told him I was leaving. It was awful. It was just awful. I got through it. I don't know how, but I did. But some of them didn't. Mm. <laughs> you know, it was kind of a, we'd been together so long and so closely. Mm -hmm. It was sad. Yeah, it must have been. But, um, I don't know, that's the way it is. Just as a concluding question. But I really valued mm. the friendship of those people. Mm -hmm. Because they were wonderful, wonderful yeah. staff. Yeah. As a concluding question, and I'd like to ask you what it has meant to you to be a social worker. Well, I think it's given me a great deal of personal uh, satisfaction, or I don't know what else to call it, that I have been able to contribute in some way to make things better for people. Um, I would say that is the one thing. I think also that it did another thing and that it made me very conscious of things like legislation and so on. Uh, the issues which are um, involved in this. And for instance, I don't know whether it's good or bad to be that aware, but when I was out in British Columbia last winter, I, I was in Victoria and you know, every time I read the paper I shuddered. Um, I say I don't know whether it's that good to be that aware, but you certainly are aware of what they're doing to people, mm -hmm. to people. And uh, here, you know, they uh, they cut uh, they cut the single people on on the caseload. They cut the amount of money they could get, and said, well, they can work. It's are, are like saying, eat bread, and there is no f bread, there's no flour. Mm -hmm. Make it either. Yeah. And, and this is exactly what they're doing, and uh, it makes you, I think, very conscious in these areas, you know, of, of what can happen to, to people and how important it is. It really worries me, you know, that the conservative governments are sweeping this broad country. Mm -hmm. And I may not like Turner or, or anybody else, but I sure as hell hope that the conservatives don't get in Ottawa. Mm -hmm. 
And, and yet, when uh, just before you resigned, it was a liberal government that came into office. Uh huh. It wasn't a conservative government, or not a, not a large C conservative government anyway. No, and I I didn't really resign because I was brought up a liberal. And the thing was, <laughs> when I came to this province, I didn't know what CCF meant. <laughs> I honestly right. didn't know. Right. I'd never heard of them. You know. Mm -hmm. um, I have felt too that it was a a really um, a real privilege uh, to work with people like Tommy Douglas. Um, mm -hmm. He he was such a card, and he had a fantastic memory. You know, he knew. Every, I met him out at Fort Capel. He was there giving a lecture out there. He knew me just the same as if he'd seen me yesterday. You know. Hmm. Hi, Millie. That's great. And I, I think some of the people I worked with, it was really, uh, as I say, a privilege to work with mm -hmm. them. Uh, I'm sure that my my outlook and my life expanded than if I'd just gone on teaching. Mm -hmm. I wonder then if there's anything that you'd like to add. Near me, I can't think of a thing. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, um, I've asked more questions than perhaps I should have. We've gone on quite a long time. Well, in conclusion, I'd like to thank you very much for the time that you spent with us this morning and say how much I appreciate and uh, how much I enjoyed the interview. Thank you very much. Fine. I think if there are any, you know, I know you've finished now, but if there are any spots you want to check, a lot of what I've said this morning is right in here. <clears throat> yeah, and, and well, we can use it for that. Um, but to the extent that you said it on the tape, that, that that's also a help. But the things we said, like about, uh, you know, abuse and so on, I. I mentioned it there because I was positive it's, it was there, but we couldn't see it. Couldn't. Because, you see, I think you have to remember that back in 1940, the road system was appalling. This is one of the things that the CCR government did right away, was build roads. Yes. Yeah so that people weren't as isolated. That kind of thing would make so much difference. I mean, electricity. Most Canadians don't realize that there wasn't much electricity in rural areas until the 50s. The only difference that would make in a rural area. Well, on farms it meant the difference between uh, slave labor and enjoying life yeah. on the farm. Yeah. You know, when I think of the way my dad worked, it appalls me. Yeah. Well, now if they're loading a, you know, a load of wheat, they just turn the switch and the elevator takes it up and puts it in and so on. My dad shoveled. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a difference. Sure, sure. That's a difference. Well, um, <clears throat> I want to ask. Uh, we can take this mic microphone off now if you want to. And uh, thanks. Um, you mentioned. Um, are you off? The um, I don't know whether this would show or not. sit down and just hold it, hold it steady, and then he can he can either either focus or else maybe he'll move the camera in a bit to because he can get that really clearly on there. And you tell me when you want and I'll turn this on back here. Okay, I think it's uh, I'm ready.
And if, when he's ready, if you would describe that, just say what it is and when you got it and why. Oh dear, I don't know. Um, you don't know when you got it? Well, just a minute now. Just hold it for a second. I can't, uh, you know, I always said I should write this down somewhere so I wouldn't lie about things. <laughs> It was interesting uh, that uh, about this. I'm not, am I on the air or something? Yes. No. Well, I'm not because I'm not tied up. No, you're all. We're recording this just on the video. Yeah, we have that microphone. Oh. Picking up. <laughs> just like, anytime. Okay. Anytime. Oh, okay. The university. Oh. Is this it? The University of Regina gave me a doctorate, and this is a certificate, in 1975. It was in recognition of the years I had spent um, in child welfare and the work that I had done there. Okay. Okay. Uh, this award was given to me by the Saskatchewan Association of Social Workers in appreciation of the long years that I had spent in uh, social work practice in this province. That's what the staff gave me when I left, when I left, so that I would never forget where I came from. Oh, well, that's a nice one too. Let's move the microphone over there, and you can do the same thing with that one. Would you want to do that? Okay. Let's move this. Um, this picture was given to me by the staff of the Department of Social Welfare when I left. And they said they gave it to me because uh, they didn't want me to forget Saskatchewan. I think the interesting thing about this is they knew me well enough that they had this picture made so that it could hang above my Chesterfield. Which plane are you going to catch? 520. Um, what are you doing for the rest of the day? Oh, I'm just going to pack up my things and then I'm going to go someplace and have lunch and look around a little bit. I've, uh, as I was mentioning to Al, when I've been to Regina before, I've not had a car, so I've not looked around too much and I don't know what's here. So. Do you have a car? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've rented a car, so I'm going to go do a little sightseeing. Oh. But I was going to say I have a car and I'd be glad to take you around. Oh, well, um, uh, I, that would be nice if, uh, do you want to go out somewhere and have lunch? Sure. Okay, you want to join us? 
Uh, well, thank you anyway, but I have a couple of things I have to do today, and I have to work at 5 o'clock. So. You're taking a picture of that. This is a very interesting thing, this picture. It, it doesn't need to go on. I don't want it on the air at all. Oh, you know. Well, I don't mind the picture being on the air, but <laughs> my commentary. This was really a valentine, and it was given by my father to my mother the year before they were married, which was in 1897. And it was still on the back of it. It says the Northwest Territories. 